Now you are a very big topic. So in exploring you, we're going to take our time and over three books, each of which will have nine chapters, we're going to look at all the major components that make you, you. So in book one, we're going to look at your whole identity and the aspect of your identity that summarizes and encapsulates all other aspects is the simple question, are you a creator? Because if you can't ex create expressions of your identity, it does not even matter if you have an identity. So the question of, are you a creator, is the first place you must start in the process of exploring you. Then, in book two, we will move on to your role identity. Now, when the original creator brought forth the heavens and the earth, he gave three jobs to human beings, three roles that we are here to play. He said subdue, he said fill, and he said rule. So we have these characters, these roles of the subduing warrior, the filling wizard, and the ruling will. So the question becomes, are you the warrior, are you the wizard, or are you the will? And if you look at all major uh, media and theater, they all have to do with at least one highlighting at least one of these roles and the truly epic adventures, the truly uh, wondrous stories have all three interwoven within the story. And we like that because that's our original purpose. In fact, the creator seems to enjoy that because he reiterated these three role identities in the Great Commission. He said, go and make disciples. That's the subduing warrior. He said, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the filling wizard. And he said, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And that is the ruling will. So these roles aren't going anywhere. And there's one of these in particular that you really like. Now you do have all three, because if you look at the original writing of creation, the creator made us in his likeness. So we have all of his attributes kind of bound up within us uh, in some form or another. So you do have all three, you do like all three, but there's one in particular that you are very strongly drawn towards and that is your role to play. It is your service to this world to create a unique expression of that role and model it before creation. That's how you bless the world. And finally, that will lead us to book three, where we're going to look at your soul identity. Now, human beings, you and I included, we're always looking for what makes me unique? Am I even unique? Now, the arena that we're looking to define our uniqueness is usually in the mental realm or the emotional realm or the visible realm of this world that we can see. Unfortunately, there's nothing new under the sun. So if you're looking to define your uniqueness based on something that's under the sun, which your mind, heart, and body are under the sun, they're part of creation, you're not going to find your uniqueness. However, there is a part of you, the true part of you, your soul, your spiritual nature, that is not under the sun. A spiritual being is not under the visible material sun. You are separate from that. Although you're in a body, you have a body, you are distinctly separate. So your uniqueness is dependent on your soul identity. And then the question becomes, well, where do I find out my soul identity? Well, the only way you can understand your soul's identity is look to the one who created your soul, which is not you, and it's not anything in creation. It is the creator. And if we look at the creator, he is a being. He doesn't do things. He is the being of those things. So he doesn't do love. He is love. He is wisdom. He is truth. And that is the secret. That is the key to your soul identity. Now you do want all of the wondrous nature of the creator. You want his love and you want to be his truth and you want to be his compassion and all these wonderful traits. But again, there is one in particular that you are very, very strongly drawn towards. And that is your soul identity to be love, to be truth. Now, at the same time, don't be confused that you will be fully embodying truth or love. There's only one who fully embodies those character traits, those spiritual living natures. Only the creator does. But you, as a creator, will create unique expressions and you will play them out through your role, the warrior, the wizard, the will, and you will display your uniqueness to creation. That's very exciting to you. It's very exciting to creation and also seems to be very exciting to the creator. So let's begin with your whole identity. And in chapter one, we're going to look at interpreting the creator.
Now, if you look at everything that exists, it's all an interpretation of the creator. It's not a perfect interpretation. So trees tend to express his strength, his deep-rooted nature. Um, they tend to express his abundance. But there's more than just that in the creator. And the tree doesn't perfectly express the creator. It's just an interpretation. Likewise, every human being is also an interpretation. But you're different. You have the free-willed nature to walk with the creator and uniquely interpret the creator. And that's our job, to work with creation in order to bring forth our interpretations of the creator. And they're all going to be different. However, if we're all walking with the same creator, there's no disagreement there. Although each of our interpretations will be different and unique, because we're walking with the same creator, it's all part of the same source. He's the source. We walk with him and we all bring forth unique interpretations. That's the joy of our nature. So the creator is the source. Everything comes from him. And we're going to look at that in section one. Once you understand the creator, you look at what did he do first? The first thing he did was he brought forth creation. Before he even brought human beings into the place, into this world, he made creation, all these wonderful things. And we need to look at, okay, so how does the creator create? How does creation create? And then you can start to see how do we create as the created creators. So we're not the creator, but however, we do create like him. He made us unique from creation. And we're going to look at the relationship between each of these three, the creator, the creation, and the created creator. So the creator made creation to be subdued, filled, and ruled, and those are the roles we talked about, by interpretive creators. You're not supposed to be God. You're supposed to bring a unique interpretation of God into the world. And creation wants to work with you in doing that. But to work with creation, you need to subdue it like the word, you need to fill it like the wizard, and you need to rule it like the will in order for the purpose of bringing forth your unique interpretation of the one you're walking with. That's our job. That's our responsibility. And that's how all three work together. So let's look at the creator. How does the creator create? And the first thing we realize is he creates something from nothing. It's so far beyond what we could possibly comprehend. He goes into the darkness and he brings forth the fullness of light. From the emptiness of darkness, he summons the fullness of light. Now, we think we understand this because sometimes at night we're in darkness, but that's not actual darkness. When the lights go out, there's still oxygen and there's still dust floating around. That's not real darkness. Real darkness is there's no oxygen there. There's no gases there. There's no dust there. There's no nothing there. It's, an, it's a complete abyss. And then you summon something out of that. But we don't know how to do that because we're not a creator like the creator. We're not him. Only he can do that. But furthermore, not only does he create something from nothing, every one of his creations cannot be replicated. Why? First of all, you're not him. You're not the creator. So there's no way for you to actually create like him unless you are him, which you're not. Furthermore, it's not your job to replicate what he already did. Creation does that. Creation doesn't need you to do that. Your job is not to replicate what the creator did. Your job is to create unique expressions of the creator and partner with creation in order to bring forth those expressions. But it is important to distinguish that everything the creator creates can't be replicated. It can't be redone. It can't be improved upon, which in the fallen world is what you and I are trying to do. We're trying to make it good. But the most startling thing about the creator is that he is so confident in who he is, so amazing in his nature as a creator, that he actually creates creators. More than just creating creators, he gives us free will. That's astounding that he would dare to do that. And look at what we've done with our free-willed gift, with our creative gifts. We've rebelled from him. We've tried to say that he's not good, that we're the true good, that he's evil. He messed up in the way he made this world, and we're now going to fix it. That's what we've done, but he's not threatened by that. He's so amazing in his nature that he can create us as creators, give us free will, and then he's not threatened by how we use all those gifts that he's given us. So at the bottom of this understanding, how does the creator create? In a simple form, the creator is beyond anything that is created. And this is an important distinction because 
you and I both think that we can get to the creator, we can get to be good by creating thoughts, emotions, and actions. But this is the mistake we made in the Garden of Eden. We reached into creation, we took the fruit, which is a creation, and we used the fruit, we tried to use the fruit, the forbidden fruit, to become like him. But he's beyond any creation. You can't use something lesser than him to become greater than him. It doesn't work that way. So your only hope is to actually walk with cre the creator and have him teach you how to create like him. That's what he wants. So we've learned a little bit about how the creator creates. Let's look at creation. How does creation create? And in a most simple form, creation creates something from something. So that's a very basic way to say that trees create trees and squirrels create squirrels. They keep creating the same somethings from the pre-existing somethings. It just keeps going and going and going and going. And the reason they're doing that, the reason creation's doing that, is it's trying to replicate the original blueprint. Because remember, when the heavens and the earth were created, the creator brought forth everything that's here, and he said it's good. That was the stamp of approval, and creation can still sense that. Creation's still aware of that original blueprint, and it's trying to get back there. But there's a problem. The problem is you and me. We're dragging creation away from that original blueprint, and we're saying, no, 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 that's not the good way to do things. I know the true good. I'm the true good. I'm the good creator, and I will show you the way, creation. So we're dragging creation away from that, and all the disease and the mutations and the terrible things that exist in this world is because we're trying to lead creation towards our standard of good, towards our creative nature, and that, of course, is the problem. So in the end, you want to see that creation ultimately is creating the creator's creations. It wants to replicate them. Now, there's two sides to this. First, creation does want to build the original blueprint. But there's another component to this. Creation also wants to partner with you because you're also a creator. You're not the creator, but you are a creator becoming more like the creator. So if you're walking with God, you're going to bring unique creations, unique interpretive creations, out into creation and creation wants to create those expressions creation wants to work with you and bring forth your interpretations of the creator but ultimately the real drive of creation is to return to that original blueprint and it's very interested in any soul like you or me that might be walking with the creator and can bring forth something exciting something new something fresh that creation hasn't experienced before so creation is replicating what the creator created, both the original creator primarily, but also creation is looking to you. Are you living by faith? Are you walking with the creator? Do you have a unique perspective on the creator? And they want to, creation wants to work with you in that. So then we come to section three, where we're going to look at our role. We've seen a little bit about how the creator creates. We've seen a little bit about how creation creates. So now how, how do we really partner uh, with the creator and with creation. And we tend to be in between the two. We're supposed to walk with the creator and bring forth unique interpretations into the creation. So we're this wondrous link between God and his creation. He put us there. So he created creation. Then what did he do in the Garden of Eden? He said, go rule it, go subdue it, go fill it. He gave us this world. So we're the created creators. And the first thing you need to know about us is that we create something from someone. Now originally we were supposed to be walking with the creator. He was supposed to be the someone that we're creating expressions of. But of course when we rejected him in the Garden of Eden and we said no we want to do it our way, we would want to create in our own knowledge of good, then of course the only person we had left to create from was ourself. So you're creating all your expressions, all your thoughts, emotions, and actions, all your relationships and your finances, you're creating those expressions all to glorify you. And that might explain a few things. So, but again, you don't have any other option because remember, you're born separate from the creator. The only spiritual being you have is your own soul. So you're creating your somethings from the someone that you're living with, which is you. You're alone. And that's it. That's the picture of your life. You're making you, which is why in the end you ultimately will die because 
You're spiritually already dead. You're alone. You have no life. You're separate from the creator. And that's why we all inevitably, our bodies eventually die. So once you understand that you're making your creations from someone, you start to see that you're making unique replications. Now, there's nothing new under the sun. So your thoughts, emotions, and actions aren't really new, but your soul has the potential to walk with the creator and bring a unique replication. Now you say, well, wait, uh, all creation uh, is expressing the creator. That's correct. But remember, you have free will. So you can respond and create something in any way you see fit. So you walk with the creator, you learn about him, he teaches you about himself, and then you have the free will to express that learning, that knowledge that you've received in any way you see fit. But when you express that unique knowledge, it's going to come in replication form. It's going to have generally the same thoughts, emotions, and actions, but because your spiritual knowledge that's hidden inside is unique, the creation is going to be like, whoa, what, what is this? I, I don't know what this is. I've seen these thoughts, emotions, and actions before, but this knowledge is unique. There's something different here. So when we create expressions of him, the someone, we hide our unique knowledge in these standard replications, these thoughts, emotions, and actions, these relationships, uh, these, this money, all these things that we have to work with. But we put our unique nature in there. So we create unique replications. And ultimately, we create like the creator. And this is a little hint of what went wrong in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, we wanted to be like God, more specifically, we wanted to be the creator, but God didn't want us to be like him. That job is already filled. He, he's God. He's the creator. We don't need another one. He does the job very well. He created us to be like him, to more specifically, to create like him, to learn from him, learn from his ways, his amazing nature, and all the attributes of who he is, and then create unique expressions of that likeness. So we are to create like him, not to be like him, to create like him and learn and learn and learn. And there's never going to be an end. And that's very exciting. So our job, myself and you, we are here to create by walking with the creator and creating unique interpretations of the creator. And in doing that, we have to work with creation. We have to subdue. We have to fill. We have to rule creation in order to bring our unique interpretations out into the world. And that's the joy of being a created creator.